are going to study the refraction through this glass slab and we are going to also find what is angle of incidence, angle of refraction and angle of emergence. We are going to see what is lateral displacement and we are also going to see how to calculate the refractive index. When we have the experiment for the glass slab to be done, we place this glass block on the white paper and then we trace the outline of it. I will trace from this end I shall take 4 centimeters and at 4 centimeters I'm going to draw the normal. I'm going to keep this point here and I'm going to mark this 90 degrees. I'm going to take the angle of incidence as 30 degrees so this is 90, this is 80 so that is 10 degrees, 20 and 30. So where it is 60, I'm going to mark this as angle of incidence. To begin with, what we will do is we will draw the normal. This is a 90 degree point and this is the 4 centimeter point. So we will just show this is your 30 degrees mark. So this becomes your angle of incidence. This is 30 degrees. Now we have to take four pins because light is an invisible form of energy. It makes things visible. So we cannot really see the ray of light. We are going to use the pins which I'm going to place exactly at 90 degrees here. Pins, this is P1 and this is a pin. P2. And now we place this glass slab exactly on its outline. Make sure that the edge is nicely aligned with the line that we had placed earlier. We are going to see the images of these two pins from this side. We have this surface being the first refracting surface and this refracting surface being the second refracting surface. The ray of light is going to enter from air into glass, get refracted because it is going from the rarer medium into the rarer denser medium it will turn towards the normal and then here from the denser medium into the rarer medium it will turn away from the normal what I forgot to do is to draw the original direction of the incident ray I should have done that earlier so you see these two pins represent the incident ray and we are going to look at the images of these two from this side and remember this over here you can see the dashed line that shows the original direction of the incident ray. Now the ray is going to enter from the rarer medium into the denser medium that is from air into glass and then it is going to turn towards the normal because its speed is going to decrease and then from glass into the air at this surface so it will turn away from the normal because its speed is going to increase. Let us see how we plant the two pins over here which will show the refracted ray. So remember we are having the object pins over here and the image pins will be on this side. So we have to look at the images of these two pins from this side. Object pins are there. From this surface you can see these two are the images of those object pins. These two object pins you will see over here from this side you can see them as a separately. Now I'm going to move the camera from side to side. Watch this very carefully okay. I am moving the camera from this side to this side and you will see at a particular point here the pins are exactly one behind the other. On the paper I am going to plant the third pin so that it will be in line with these two pins. Now this is the third pin that is planted. You can see these pins which are the object pins and this pin which is the image pin. Okay, now this pin is in line with these two object pins. Let us see how. You have to close one eye and move your eye in such a way that the image pins which you can see in the background there. Can you see the third pin? It is exactly behind them. I am just moving this slightly this side. You can see the images. If I move it this side, you can see the images. Okay, so you will see this is called as parallax. Okay, when you see these images like this, this is called as parallax, but you will see that the third pin is placed exactly in such a way that it is coming behind the object pins. Okay, can you see that? 
Now I'm going to plant the fourth pin. Can you see that the fourth pin has been placed exactly behind the third pin and if I move my position of the eye slightly from side to side now the fourth pin is not exactly vertical so I'll just make it vertical there all the four pins are one behind the other see this is how the setup looks like you can see the two object pins and the two image pins we are going to remove this pin and circle that point. I'm going to remove this pin and circle that point as well. Now we have to remove this slab and if we join these two we will get the emergent ray. So let us do just that. This is the emergent ray. It came out of there so this point and this point over here. This is the point of incidence and this is the point of emergence and we will join these two points and this will be a refracted ray and can you see over here this refracted ray could have gone like so but it has got away from the normal so now at this point I shall show a quick normal now when you have to draw the normal what we have to do is the markings of the ruler they are exactly 90 degrees to this edge so make sure that this line is coinciding with this edge and then this vertical edge becomes the normal this becomes your angle of emergence from here to here we are going to find out how much is this angle that is angle of refraction this was the angle of incidence now we have angle of refraction here we will keep our protractor this way and now we are going to look at this from here to here this is 19 and this is 20 and your ray is somewhere in between so we are going to write this angle of refraction as 19 degrees and 30 minutes that is 19.5 degrees we have angle i equal to 30 degrees and angle of refraction is 19.5 degrees so sine of angle of incidence is going to be equal to sine of 30 degrees which will be half means 0.5 and the sine of angle of refraction will be sine of 19.5 degrees which is sine of 19 degrees and 30 minutes let us check it out 19 degrees and 30 minutes 0.3338 so our refractive index which is mu which is given as sine of angle of incidence upon sine of angle of refraction which is equal to 0 0.5 Zero, 0 upon 0 0.3338 and that it turns out to be 1.4979 which you round off to 1.5 so this is a mu g means refractive index of glass with respect to air. So we understood how this is done. In our experiment, we had the incident ray. Then we have this is the refracted ray and this one is the emergent ray. And you will see that the original direction of the incident ray is like so and the emergent ray is like so and this perpendicular distance between the original direction of the incident ray and the final direction of the emergent ray this is lateral displacement original direction is like so and the final direction is like so can you see the emergent ray over here it is parallel to the original direction of the incident ray so that is what is refraction in a glass block now we will see how it looks through the laser because when the laser beam is incident on this surface you will see part of the energy getting reflected and part of it is getting refracted and then you will see the emergent ray also and you will see that in the last part of this video. Hope you have understood what is refraction in a glass slab and how to find the refractive index and also what is the lateral displacement. If you found this useful, you can share it with your friends. Thank you for watching.